These California almond orchards are the temporary home to nearly all U.S. honeybees. That's right. It takes nearly 90% of the country's honeybees for almond trees to produce the nuts you eat. There's millions of beehives coming to California to pollinate almonds because people want almonds and they want their almond milk. California grows 80% of the world's almonds and is its most profitable crop. Migratory beekeepers chuck in their bees from all across the country. They work around the clock, moving their bees in the middle of the night when they're not flying. I have beekeepers that come from Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Texas, New York. But honeybees are getting harder for beekeepers to keep alive. Last year, they lost over 43% of their hives. We worry a lot on our side, on the beekeeper side. It's not sustainable, and I don't think anybody really thinks it is. The demand for almonds and almond milk continues to expand, meaning they need more bees. Where those bees will come from is, is a bit of a mystery. So what happens if beekeepers just can't produce enough bees? We went to California's Central Valley to ask the workers behind the bees. So why do we care about honeybees? Well, around one third of the world's food supply relies on pollination. And we're facing a decline of pollinators across the spectrum, including butterflies, bats, and of course, bees. Think of honeybees as domesticated pollinators managed by commercial beekeepers. The USDA even classifies honeybees as livestock. Historically, crops were pollinated by native bee populations in locally managed honeybee hives. But industrial agriculture grew beyond these beans, and local bees could no longer meet the demand for pollination. This dilemma birthed an entire industry, migratory beekeeping. These traveling beekeepers drive across the country with their bees stacked on truck beds. Then they rent them to growers. You know, this may not look like a lot of fun to some people. I can't tell you that I love living in a truck stop for a month or more at a time, but just sort of get used to it. More than 100 U.S. crops require pollination, but almonds provide the vast majority of income for beekeepers. There are over 1.5 million acres of almond trees in California, and an estimated 2.5 million honeybee colonies were needed to pollinate those trees this year. George Hansen and his son Joe are two of these commercial migratory beekeepers. For more than 30 years, George has made his living transporting his bees from Oregon to California for the almond bloom. I thought that we were going to be honey producers and we were going to produce honey and sell it. Over time, it turned out, you know, having to support a family and pay the bills, other opportunities came along. Say 30 years ago, there was almost no commercial pollination going on at all. And now that's almost all that we do. Many commercial beekeepers, like George and his son Joe, can't survive off of honey sales alone. When cheaper foreign honey flooded the U.S. market, local honey prices plummeted. Yeah, I worry about the sustainability of all this, you know, every day. Our losses can be scary sometimes, but every year we just manage to, to make it up by splitting colonies in the spring and building new colonies, and that's the way it's been for my whole life. It's not getting any easier. Now beekeepers make around 80% of their income on pollination. But as colony losses continue to increase, it's getting more difficult for them to make a living. We've had a few disasters over the years, and some of it is seeing the bees just not doing well or coming out of winter in really poor shape. And part of it is wondering, well, how is this going to work? Because we depend on this income. All of a sudden, our livelihood is, is gone. George and his crew live out of a motel for nearly two months every year. We pick up everything, and we come down here, we live in motels, we eat in restaurants or in the room or whatever now with COVID. Okay, so this is home. I was here for almost four weeks in January when we were putting the bees into the orchard. So the trick is to stay comfortable and clean and not lose track of your family and your life. For the almond pollination, we're in motels for six to eight weeks. It's a long time away from home. That's Jenny Durant. She's been studying bee management practices in the almond industry for nearly a decade. You know, when you think about 100 cattle for a rancher, that's almost 50% of their cattle being lost every year. So it's an immense expense that, that beekeepers are having to make up for. Experts can't point to one reason why honeybee colony losses are increasing. Rather, they point to a variety of issues that are hurting bees, like parasites, pathogens, poor nutrition, and pesticides. 
Pesticides are the most discussed in the media and, and it is a, they are a real issue for beekeepers. Um, pests get a little less attention, such as the Varroa mite, which is really a huge struggle for the industry. Beekeepers are having to compensate for these issues that they're dealing with. Some threats to honeybees are much harder to document, like the loss of bee-friendly forage around the country. Historically, beekeepers have gone to the Midwest in the summer to produce honey. But as monoculture corn and soy crops expanded in the region, so did the loss of native forage that provided nectar for bees. You know, this is like a giant herd that they're moving around the country just trying to provide enough food for their bees. As the almond industry expands, there's sort of, you know, more opportunity for beekeepers to have larger operations. But there has to be land that can support those bees for the rest of the year. No one knows exactly how many migratory beekeepers exist, but they're necessary to keep honeybees alive and pollinating our crops. Bees really aren't able to take care of themselves in the environment that we've created for them, especially where we're doing our pollination service and we're required to be. But with all the sprays and, and the removal of forage with uh, herbicides and stuff, it just makes it harder and harder for the bees to take care of themselves. We're supplementing their diet, we're protecting them from parasites. In order to get paid, we have to put our bees where they're in harm's way. I picked this one up out of one of these hives over here, and you notice that this is all scattered. We need this colony to be more productive than this. Honeybees pollinate nearly $20 billion worth of U.S. crops each year. Without honeybees, money crops would not exist, or their yields would be much smaller. Because if it's costing a lot more for beekeepers to keep bees alive, those costs are going to translate to the apples we buy, the almonds we buy. That's going to uh, you know, have a real effect for people who um, are more disadvantaged or vulnerable. While beekeepers rely on the almond industry for income, they don't always work directly with almond growers. That's the job of people like Denise Qualls. She works as a bee broker, which is something like a bee matchmaker, setting up almond growers with beehives for pollination season. Between mid-January and mid-March, Denise works nonstop. The intensity that you have in that two-month period I think people just don't realize how intense it is because we move bees all night, check them during the day, move them at night, check them during the day. And honestly, my phone never stops ringing. This year, Denise managed 40,000 highs from 20 to 30 beekeepers. We've got the border station to contend with, the county ag departments to contend with, vehicle breakdowns. When you have two and a half million hives coming, we're talking 30,000 truckloads of bees that need to be managed. So how's the season going for you? It's okay. Yeah? Yeah, it's about done. Denise has been working almond pollination for 15 seasons. She's seen her business explode in success over the years, but now she worries about the future of the industry. And I've always felt like we're not gonna have enough bees, we're not gonna have enough bees. I had no hives left at the end of the season. I haven't had extra hives for years. And I bring in extra hives in order to cover all of my losses. And it's a pretty fair amount. It's thousands of them and they're always gone. There's not anything left over. The almond industry is already facing challenges related to the climate crisis. Because almonds are a water intensive crop being grown in a drought stricken state. As the almond industry grows, it searches for solutions to the diminishing access to water and now honeybees. Currently only half of US states have adopted policies related to pollinator health. So some organizations and government programs are tracking pesticide use, advocating for policy change, or helping plant bee-friendly forage in almond orchards. On the other hand, renting honeybees is a huge expense for almond growers like Arthur Kroll. My bee bill is uh, about $120,000, so you want to take care of them um, to the best of your ability. The wholesale price for almonds has decreased dramatically since its peak in 2015. When the pandemic hit, almond prices dropped even further. Less money for almonds could mean less money for bees. There will be more bees. They'll keep developing more and more, I'm quite sure, because of the money. Bee industry workers like Denise and George feel the mounting pressure of the colony losses. While they hope for the best, they don't know if it's possible to keep up with the demand for bees. The almond industry still think that beekeepers are crying wolf because people like myself, brokers and beekeepers, do their very best to make sure growers have everything they need. Will it take a year when they really are a million hives short and they don't get a crop? Is it that kind of a train wreck we need? I don't want to wish that on anybody, but that's we haven't gotten anybody's attention yet on any of these issues. The almond and honeybee industries seem to be inextricably linked with one another. The question that remains for bee industry workers is, what happens if almond demand falls? 
Will beekeepers have enough income to keep their bees alive and pollinating the other crops that rely on them? I don't know that we'll get to a point where we have no honeybees, but I, I actually think it's the loss of pollinator biodiversity writ large that is the real loss. Like, that is the, the scariest piece. There is no single solution to mitigate the threats that our pollinators face. But rather, it is going to take people from all sectors to push for more sustainable systems that protect honeybees, pollinators, and in turn, the diversity in our diets. I think this is going to take all the industries who rely on bees partnering with beekeepers and having a shared voice to try and really shift some of the regulatory support. My hope for this industry is that everybody starts working better together. I think we're going in the right direction. I just don't know if it's going to be fast enough. <laughs>